the belief in solar exists there is no need to sell solar as a concept anymore so that is the first piece the belief in indian story exists also for investors they believe that india has a potential india has a market india has stability india has good governance so that exists are we going to achieve 100 gigawatt by 2022 tall order i think it would be somewhere lesser than that for sure it's a target to achieve for sure but we might fall short of it what do we need to do in order to even go closer to it how should we improve the speed of installations key is policy consistency in policy walk the talk say do give a road map for the next one year we one doesn't need a five year horizon a five year horizon is good for planners it is not good for investors or for financial institutions give a one year horizon to show how many megawatts we are going to announce in which states so that investors know and they can plan the funds they can bring the money inside and they can participate at the right time it will also give opportunities for evacuation planning it will give opportunities for the contracting companies to plan their working capital and essentially it will help the entire manufacturing system also in terms of the volume planning so what other countries have achieved is to show a road map which is near term and we are missing that so that's a very very key element the second element is obviously on the transition from risk hungry funding to the low risk funding but a larger volume in terms of financial institutions that move is a combination of three things one is policy which we already spoke second is inherently a control on quality i would still urge the financial institutions to start looking at pure non recourse requirements of having bankability indices done for modules inverters balance of systems contracting companies energy yield assessments done through accredited one or two auditors and actual tests done on the product including destructive testing before allowing financing to be done and to free float the interest rates based on the quality of the product used which has a direct bearing on the risk and reward return that will encourage good deployment for sure and also free up capital uh, from going into non performing deployment as well so from a quality aspect i think that is how we should summarize and now i would like to request uh, the audience to ask questions to the panelists and please raise your hands and we'll pass a mic on to you Sir, we'll start with the thing and we'll come back yeah fine sir sure yeah good morning to the panelists and my fellow visitors i'm shrinivas from renewable energy applications and products uh it was a very informative discussion i have a couple of questions uh we've all seen that the prices for selling power in the solar sector is dropping at every bid in most of the states uh are these prices really viable and if not what should be the uh, proper selling price to be for a company to be profitable for a epc company to be profitable that's one question second is uh, what is the interest rate recommended for solar power developers or investors Uh, at these uh, kind of prices um there is a speculation in the market all the solar bids today are speculative in nature so anyone bidding into the next 12 to 24 months of cod uh, risks what the module price could be and what the exchange rate could be at that point of time yeah it is not the known it is a bet on the unknown yeah so to that extent it is always in the gray area in today's context it will not be viable if you start looking from today's pricing perspective but it is a risk appetite of that particular investor uh, who bids see but the the problem is it it creates a bad trend in the market people start expecting lower and lower prices even when we try to sign ppas with uh, factories for example they say look at the prices in the newspaper i read it's around 3 rupees or 3 rupees 50 paisa and you are quoting 4 and a half rupees 5 rupees why can't you quote the same and when we try to explain we sometimes lose out on the orders so you know these kind of uh, bidding whether it's future stick or whatever it is it creates a very bad trend in the total market itself so few days ago in the renewable energy expo uh, in the ceos forum of which i was a part the similar topic came up is generation based incentive what other countries did including china and germany earlier the better way or is 
bidding the better way. Yeah, I think that's one of the ways of finding out. The minute you bring in bidding, you always bring in speculation. You can't avoid it. It is always risk taking. Generation based incentive on the other hand gives an assurance to the investors and gives a kind of a stability to the financial institutions also. But what it does is that there is always an ambiguity that are we paying more than what the product price at that point is. Yeah, discovery of the price does not happen. So I guess there has to be a model where the CERC tariff that gets announced as a, as a recommendation should be converted into a floor tariff that no one can go below a certain number. Yeah, That's one of the ways of making it healthier so that the speculation is limited and it doesn't go without any bottom. For the second part, I would request you to help. See, as of now, apart from the variables that we talked of, even the module prices are variable. Technology, like he would say, inverter prices, mechanisms, systems of power evacuation, Everything is speculative. So you cannot expect that the market, a free market like India, will not have a price discovery mechanism on its own. We cannot straddle everything and strap everything and say we will have this flow rate and that ceiling rate. It will ultimately have to be that when you are in the market, you will have to deliver a quality product at a quality price. And the price discovery is a two-way mechanism. It is for you to bid, it is for the purchaser to purchase. We cannot come along and say, I will bid because these are my costs, but he doesn't have the option to discover the price from some other vendor. That is not the way free market works. You will have to compete. No, it's not about competing. It's about you know the reducing prices, which create Maybe the, the project itself. Detailed discussion can yeah. carry on because in the interest of time, we need to. Yeah, we can have one last question. I would just. I have spent uh, thirty-five years in uh, thermal power generation. Right. Uh, three issues I would like to just put forth to you. One is regarding the tariff you are talking about. Already, there is this availability-based tariff, ABT, wherein we have to give the availability previous day itself, and it has to be, uh, by midnight, it comes into force. So that safeguard is already there. This is one point. The second is regarding storage. Now, storage, we have limited to only batteries. There is another important thing which we have not done, and that is the flywheel. Flywheel storage, in USA, if you see, they are having Enormous flywheel storage. Now, how is it connected with this? When you are having so much of a solar energy and you are having the potential, when there is sunlight, you uh, convert that energy and push it into the uh, flywheels. As a uh, person who has sat in the control room, the worst part is between 5 and 7 in the evening. So during that period, you should release that flywheel energy. This is the second part. The third part is, Solar, after 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, there is no solar and therefore it is of no use. Slightly deviating from this, what I would like to say is, your concentrated solar thermal, though it may not be related to this, I would like to put forth this. Here, what happens is, the thermal cycle is the same, except the boiler. Here, you require a combined cycle boiler. And you can store, concentrated solar energy can be stored in uh, salt, salt tanks. And this can be released, isn't it? Yes. And we can use this for story, uh, generating during night. So there is no concept of uh, solar not being utilized. You, uh, solar is, con uh, is available and we can make use of the solar throughout the night and day. Thanks a lot for that insight. Uh, yeah, we'll have one last question from us. So I would like to differ here. Uh, it's less of a speculative, if you ask me, the bidding that is happening. And price that we have discovered has already been bid two years back, one and a half years back globally. It is purely innovation driven. I don't know, maybe in India, very less few people have actually looked at why the other country, others have bid this price two years back. Look at 
okay bidding is bad bidding is the best thing that is happening in india prices are coming down because somewhere else somebody has done a good job there so if you follow that we can meet that so all the prices are actually good and we are close to pl of 30% in solar nobody talks about it today and there is no policy problem in india if you ask me you can ask me state by state i can sit with you and tell you absolutely there is no policy problem crystal clear policies are there yes we want for bankers for liability you want protection i agree for non recourse yes it has to happen maybe bad president in thermal and then your conventional plans where you had gone for a non cross lot of npas you don't don't want to touch solar so solar is the best option so i can sit with you and explain to you bankers you can still go for non cross anyway nobody looks at it today thank thanks you thanks for that uh, just to add on masdar had some uh, other schemes equity participation tax breaks etc at the end of the day but i agree you can with do you all that. i agree with you, you. what that. the fact is it's financial engineering at the end of correct. the day so tariff always bidding always leads to innovation and price reduction is a valid point i guess the say do is what was telling policies exist it is on the deployment uh, where there was a lacuna i can talk to not correct, now correct. i can talk correct. lot about it take it up later yeah, yeah sure Thank you very much, uh, uh, dear panelists, and uh, I would uh, like to thank the audience. You have been wonderful audience, and thank you for coming up in uh, big numbers. So, big round of applause uh, for this wonderful session. Uh, special thanks to all the panelists for really enlightening all the audience and everyone with great enthusiasm and zeal. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to present uh, some small mementos, uh, and I'll request our session chair Santosh ji to present it to all the fellow panelists, please. Thank you very much, uh, sir. And uh, in the interest of time, uh, we'll move on to our next session on project development financing and EPC session. Thank you very much. <laughs>